Hello everyone, it's been a while since I've done a tutorial. Um, so today I'm going to show you guys how to rig a character head using joysticks and sliders. Um, so first thing is I had illustrated this character in Illustrator and imported the file in as a composition. So that's what we're looking at here, and I separated all the layers out, and I'll go through and I'll show you each and every layer that I've created. Um, first things first is we're going to select all of our layers, and then right click, and then create shapes from vector layer. So then that just generates shape layers from the Illustrator file that I already created. And I'm going to bring those to the top by holding Command Shift bracket. And then I'm just going to go ahead and delete all these other layers. And I'm going to go ahead and rename these layers. It looks like I forgot to name this one in Illustrator, but that layer is the neck. So it it adds this the word outlines to every layer once you convert it to outlines. And just to be clean, I like to delete that from all my layers. So I'll go ahead and do that and I'll speed this up here. Alright, now that we've done that, um, I'll go ahead and show you exactly what I have here. So I have a neck layer, I'm just gonna delete that. a neck layer, a head layer. Side, I'm calling this sideburn one, but it's basically like the sideburn and like the back of the hair. Sideburn two, ear L, ear R. Um, and the way I do it, I always name them whether if, if it's facing my left, then I'm going to call it the left ear, even though it's the character's right ear. I know a lot of people do it the other way around, but to me it just is less confusing. I1, I2, nose, mouth, eyebrows, top hair, top hair strands, and then these blush circles. So first things first is we're going to start with the head layer and I'm only going to show my neck and head layers here. I'm going to bring up the position I'm going to bring up the position property here for this layer I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a decent amount and I'm going to set a keyframe and that is going to be the front facing keyframe for this joystick then I'm going to move up one keyframe and move the head to the right about that far move up one more keyframe up here in joist this is joysticks and sliders up here so this is what we're using to make this head rig up here i'm going to click origin which basically just copies that first keyframe and duplicates it and puts it right where the your cursor is and then i'm going to go ahead and move the head over that way. So that'll be the left facing. So this is going to be the right facing. This is going to be the left facing. Move up one more keyframe. Click on origin. That's going to be looking up. Move up one more keyframe. Origin. That's going to be looking down. So yeah, it looks weird now, but we're going to go ahead and add some more keyframes to this layer um, using the path property here. So set a keyframe for the forward facing head, move up, and the way I've illustrated this head is it's it's got the same number of points, it's basically perfectly symmetrical so it's got just one point here and another point over here top and bottom. So for this rig, we're going to take this 
and move it about there. Move up a keyframe, click on origin to copy the first keyframe. And then, oh wait, we don't want that because it's also copying the property for the position. So I'm gonna undo that. And I'm just gonna copy it myself here. And then we're gonna click that point. And I'm holding shift too, so, so it kind of snaps and stays into that, the uh, X axis. So I'm just comparing the two to see if they look pretty similar. And I think they do, I think they look good. Maybe this needs to come in a little bit more. And then I'm gonna move up keyframe. I'm gonna copy that origin here. And then, so this is looking up. So when this character looks up, its chin's gonna kind of move up and the top of its head's gonna move down a little bit. So then we're going to move up another keyframe, copy the origin. Now this is when he's looking down. So now the chin is also gonna be going down and the top of the head's gonna be going down. Basically the same as the looking up keyframe. So I'm just going to copy that one actually and use that. Okay, so those are the keyframes that we're going to be using for the head. And I'm just going to double check them, see how they look. I'm wondering if the right facing could move over a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks good. All right, and the reason why I toggled the neck layer on was just so I could see where the head is in relation to the neck. So now I'm going to move on to another layer here of this head. And I think I'm going to do the top hair next. So for this, this is always like the trickiest I feel when it comes to rigging a head is the hair because it's just, it's, it's weird and it's hard. Um, so bear with me, I'm, I don't know how this is going to work out with this character. So we're just going to go ahead and see how, see how it goes. So I set a position keyframe here for the front facing, I'm gonna move up a keyframe. And I'll move the hair to about where I think. I'm not looking at this side. I'm looking at like right here. I want this to align in the center, just like it is in our first keyframe. So I'm gonna kind of eyeball that, line it up here with that with the chin. I'm gonna move up keyframe, hit origin, do the same thing for over here. Move up a keyframe, hit origin. Now he's going to be looking up, so the hair is going to go up and then down. Move up a keyframe, hit origin. Now he's looking down. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Um, we'll see how it looks later. And I hate how it makes these curves. So I usually just fix that real quick by holding Alt or Option and selecting all those keyframes and clicking on one of the points. Okay, um, so with that, we're also gonna need to animate the path. So I'll set a keyframe here for the forward facing I'll move up a frame, and this is where we kind of have to play with it. Um, I'm going to select, I'm holding Alt or Option right now and selecting these points of the hair all at once, just to kind of 
see how this is going to work. And it's really tough. See what I mean? It's you kind of just have to play around with it and just kind of imagine what this guy's hair would look like when he turns his head this direction. It's not the easiest. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here. So. Probably shrink in a bit on this side. Who knows what it's going to look like? Maybe we want, we want to have some of these curves that's not completely, you know, perfectly rounded. Um, this is a difficult character that I chose for this. I'm sorry. I might fast forward through this part just so you're not watching me finesse every single point of this shape. Okay, I'm gonna try that, see how that looks. It could look terrible, who knows. Move up a keyframe, copy that first path, and then do the same thing for this side. So I'm gonna fast forward this a little bit. Okay, so that looks all right to me. Um, What's going on up here? Fix that. Looks alright to me. Not sure how it's going to work out. Move up a keyframe. Copy that. First keyframe. So this is where he is looking up. So the top, the bottom part of this shape here is going to move up. We've already moved it up using the, the position keyframe. So I think that should be good there, but now the top part of the hair is actually going to go down a little bit while he looks up. Should be good. Now we'll move up a keyframe, copy that first path keyframe. Now he's looking down, and we've already moved the hair down here a little bit, so again, that should be in the right spot. These um, top parts now are going to move up as he looks down. So I'm going to select those and just, whoops, we don't want these. Move that up. All right, now we'll move on to another layer. Sorry for that, if that was really confusing. Um, all right, so now we'll move on to another layer of this head rig. Um, for the next part, I will do the eyes. So I'll do both eyes at the same time. And for this, I'll tell you right now, that was the hardest part of this rig, was this top part. So. From here on out, it's going to be way easier than that. So for the eyes, I'll set both of them, both uh, key position keyframes here at the first frame, move up a frame, and then drag them both over. And then this one is going to move over a little bit more. And then I'll, I'll go back and just take a look at the distance between the eyes here and then kind of just, you know, eyeball it. Haha. Uh -huh. um, see what looks good. And 
It's all trial and error when it comes to this, really. That looks good to me. Go ahead and I'll move up a keyframe. Select both layers. I'll click on origin. And then I'll just slide these over. And I'll move that one over. And then I'll just compare it to the previous. And right now what I'm looking at is the distance between here that I chose for this and making sure that it matches up over here for that eye. And I think it's pretty close. I'd say maybe just move it over to the left a little bit more. I'm just going to compare them again. I think his eyes are too close together over here. So try that. Then I'll move up a keyframe, select both of them, click on origin, and then I'll just move these up. And then for here, I'll look at, I'll go back to my first keyframe, and I'll look at the distance between his hair and his eye, just to, you know, make sure it kind of matches. And I think that looks good. So then we'll move up a keyframe, hit origin, and then we'll move down. Something like that. Again, I'm gonna get rid of these Bezier curves in my paths here. You don't have to, I don't think. It just bothers me. Um, so I usually get rid of them. Sometimes I forget. All right, next we'll do the nose. Um, we'll zoom in on this one. Let's bring up position. Set a keyframe here for the front facing. Move up. Drag the nose so it's centered to in between the eyes. That looks good to me. Move up keyframe. You don't even have to copy the origin here, you just slide it over so it's in the middle. Move up keyframe. Copy the origin so it's perfectly centered. Slide it up. Now for here, I'm going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to look at where that top of that nose kind of aligns with the eyes and it's like kind of you know a third of the way up. So I'm going to keep that in mind when I go here. And since the nose is sticks out farther than your eyes, it's going to probably want to move up a little bit more than that third. So something like that. Now move up keyframe, hit origin, and then now slide it down a little bit so I'd say here's about a third of the eye we actually want to go down a little bit farther here I think that's good for the position let's get rid of these go back to the start and we're not actually only doing position for this one we're gonna do path as well so set a keyframe move up a keyframe and for this, I'm going to go ahead and flip that nose over. I'm just going to kind of compare it here. Okay, I think maybe down a little bit, out a little bit. Should be good. Move up a keyframe. Copy this first one. And do, are you guys understanding why I'm copying the keyframes now instead of origin? Because it's going to also copy that path, the position keyframe and replace the one that I've already done down here. So that's why I'm just copying it now. So for that, we're just gonna keep that first keyframe here. We're not gonna change anything. Move up keyframe, not gonna change anything. Move up keyframe, not gonna change anything. So now the nose is done. I'll do the mouth next. And usually for mouths, I, li I like to just do a path, um, you know, that you can make them sad or happy very easily um, with just animating that path throughout your animation. So for here, we're just going to go ahead and do... I'm actually going to change the design of this guy a little bit right now. So I'm going to straighten out his mouth and center it. 
here on his face to make it a little bit easier. I'm also going to set, see how the anchor point is over here now. I'm going to center my anchor point using Motion 2. It's uh, an awesome plugin that I use all the time. Uh, if you don't have it, I definitely recommend it. So for the mouth, we're just going to do position. So front facing, right facing. I'm just lining it up with that bottom of that nose here because that's where it is here. Left facing, move it over. Up, origin, move the mouth up. And again, I'm gonna go back to the beginning and just kind of eyeball that space in between the nose and the mouth. And I'll go back, and just kind of keep eyeballing it there. I think that looks all right. Now move up keyframe and slide the mouth down. So that looks pretty good to me. Okay, next I'll do the eyebrows. So I'll just do them both at the same time. Get those position properties down, set keyframe, move up, drag them over, and let me go back to the front facing. So yeah, it looks like they're centered pretty much. So I'll just center them above the eyes. Looks good. Move up keyframe. Center that one. Center that one. Move up keyframe. Origin. Move them up. I'm gonna double check again now what that distance is between the eye and the eyebrow here. Just gonna match that here. Move up keyframe, origin, bring it down. Alright, looks good. Next we're gonna do ears. So these are the ears. Um Actually, just going to do one at a time here. So for the ears, I'm going to put the anchor point right here, facing toward inward towards the head, and I'm going to bring up position and rotation. I'm not sure if I need rotation yet, but we might. So I'll set a keyframe, move up, bring the ear about about there, I'd say. Maybe about there. You can always go back and fix it if it looks weird afterwards. So then I'll move up, I'll hit origin, and now this is tricky. Whoops. This is tricky here because the ear isn't going to move much. Um, Gotta imagine it on the other side of his head. And I'd say it's probably about there. We'll go with that. So then I'll move up, click origin. So now he's looking up. And believe it or not, when you look up, your ears actually go down. So this is why I brought rotation in. So let me just compare it to front facing. It looks up. I think that looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a keyframe. I'm gonna move it over. That's the origin keyframe. And now I'm gonna rotate the ear. That way we don't have that weird gap. And then I'm gonna bring that origin keyframe and paste it for the other positions. And that is the left ear. 
I'm going to do the same thing for the right ear. Position rotation. Set keyframes. Move up. And for here, this ear is only going to, whoops, only going to move a little bit. And I'll double check with this one. How far did I move that one? Just a little bit. Up there. Rotation, same as the first keyframe. Move up keyframe. Bring that ear in. Now I'm going to double check it against where the ear was here. It's about, you know, just eyeball that distance from the back of his head right here. And that's how I, you know, figure out what the distance should be over here as well. And just eyeball, it's... Looks good enough. Copy that rotation. Move up to the up. Oh, and I also forgot to do the down, I just realized for the other ear, so we'll have to do that as well. I'm going to click Origin, and I'm going to move that ear down. I'm going to bring a ruler in to see you know, where that ear is. Also, looks like I forgot to move my anchor point, so i got to do that right now. That just makes sure that it rotates. It doesn't really affect the position much, but it makes sure that my rotation is rotating at the right spot. Now I gotta move it up a bit. Looks good. So then we'll go to the last keyframe here. Copy the origin for both ears. And now the ears are gonna move up as he looks down. That looks good to me. And if you want to go ahead and fix those weird curves, go for it. It doesn't matter. So next we'll do these side, kind of like sideburns, back hair thing. So these layers are going to use this head layer as a mask. So I'm going to duplicate my head layer and just name it mask. 01, bring it on top of this sideburn layer and set alpha mat mask. And then what I'm going to do is bump up the stroke up about two pixels. So now let's go ahead and set our keyframes for this sideburn. Position, move up. I'm going to go back to the beginning and kind of just see the distance from that ear to the sideburn. Kind of just make sure that it reflects here. I think that would be good, something like that. I'm also noticing that these ear layers need to move all the way up here on top. That way it's over top of his top hair. Um, actually no, let's not do that, It'll, the hair will just be hanging in front of the ear. Okay, then we'll move up, and this just gets completely dragged out of here so you can't see it anymore. I wouldn't go too far, just maybe about there. Move up keyframe, hit origin. So just like the ear, when he looks up, um, I don't know. I've always had, always had trouble with this. Um, I always kind of just like put my finger on my <laughs> own sideburn and kind of see if it moves up or down, and it actually like isn't moving at all. I'm gonna move it down a little bit for that, move up, move it, actually for this we're going to move it down. So then I'm going to go back and let's see, okay, it looks like the sideburn comes up to the top of the X, I'll make sure it's doing that here too, so it actually looks like we do go up when he looks down. 
here, I guess it would move down to where it's kind of above that X. Okay, and then I'm gonna get rid of these weird curves and then do the same thing for this. I'm gonna duplicate this mask, bring it on top of the sidebar no number two and set that alpha mask. Now we'll do positions, move over, drag it on out, move over, drag it in, it. So we gotta come in a little bit more. That looks good. Move up, hit origin, move it down. Kind of just mirroring what's on the left at this point. Move up and then move this up. Up there. Get rid of those weird curves. Awesome. So we're almost done. We have these kind of like blush shapes here that will also need to be masked. So I'm gonna duplicate that mask, bring it on top of blush number one, duplicate it again, bring it on top of blush number two, and then set these masks to set these layers to be alpha matte for these masks. And then we'll just do position for these guys. Set your front facing, move up. Next one, we go back. It looks like, let me just fix them a little bit so they're perfectly underneath of those eyes. That's good. So move up. You'll notice it's like I have the blush in front of the nose, so I'm going to want to bring that behind the nose. You'll notice that my nose has a fill, so when I illustrated it in Illustrator, I literally just made these two points, and I didn't connect it, and I added a fill. So that looks good. Move up. Same thing up here. Good. Okay. Looks good. Move up keyframe. Hit origin. Move them up. And compare it to the first keyframe here. Just checking the distance between the eye and the blush. See, that looks good. Move up. Hit origin, do the same thing here, move it down, about there. Maybe he's got like chubbier cheeks, so maybe we want to move it down a little bit farther, and maybe we want to move it up a little bit farther. Looks good. Select those, get rid of that. Um, and then all we have left are these hair strands. Turn on all my layers now because these are the only layers that are left. Hair strand. It's actually, I have these named wrong. I call that hair strand two. I'll call this one hair strand one. And I'm going to put the anchor point down here at the base for both of them. You'll see that this is a stroke with a fill also. Um, you can design your character however you want. For this, I am animating mostly on a white background. So, it, for some reason it just made sense to me to do that. Um, maybe not. I'll probably turn it off. Yeah, let me just get rid of those fills. I don't know why I did that. Just turn those fills off. 
and I can always bring them back if I want. So for this, I'll do position, zoom out on our guy here, move up a keyframe, and now I'm just going to try to imagine where this part of here would be. Hmm. I'm actually going to move these behind. Behind everything here. So it's behind all of our layers. And I'm also going to bring up rotation. Instead of keyframe. And so we'll move up. And I'm going to rotate them to the left. And I think that looks about okay. It's tough. So I moved it I moved them over a little bit to the right. Maybe a little bit more. That looks good. So we have it set to negative twenty-nine. I'll rotate it about uh, you know, positive 29, and move it to the left a little bit. Move up keyframe, hit origin, move them down, move up keyframe, hit origin, and zoom in. We don't want them to come off of his head, and they already are, which means we need to revisit our top hair layer here and just kind of bring these points up even higher than what we thought originally. Should be good. So theoretically we will have a head rig here. So I'm going to go ahead and reveal all my keyframes by hitting U on my keyboard. I'm going to select everything. I go up here to joysticks and sliders and click on this button here. That creates a new joystick. And I'm just going to name this head rig. So then it does all the math and everything in the background and spits out a joystick here. And I'm going to have a few I'm going to have two other, or I'm going to have one other joystick for this, so I'm going to scale this down to 50% and just move it over to the side of his head here. And we'll check out how it turned out. So I'll set a keyframe, move up about 10 frames, I'll have him look to the left. You'll notice his ear is still showing in front of his head. We're going to fix that um, using switch templates in a little bit, and I'll show you guys how to get rid of that. And actually, now that I'm seeing his head turn, I realized I forgot to add something. So I'm going to delete that keyframe. And now if I want to go back and make changes to all those keyframes that we just set, I'm going to go up here and Make sure that you have your rig, so your joystick selected, and unbind it to all those layers. So now it's going to bring back all of your keyframes right here. So what I realized was I forgot to do the back part of his hair. And for that, I usually just duplicate the head, bring it back behind everything... So it's all the way in the back. And I'm going to reveal that, all the keyframes for that layer, highlight them, highlight them, and basically we just need to highlight the position. I'm going to move the position up a little bit. So now we're going to 
check here for when he's facing right. Now I'm going to move this over to about here where it lines up. You'll see that it's got the same color and stroke as the head. I'm going to change that to be this red color for the hair. So that looks good. Move up, slide it back to where it's kind of lining up with that top hair. That looks good. Move up, and for here, we will move, push this down just a little bit. I don't know if we want to see it behind. Let's take a look. I'm going to get rid of that. I don't, I don't know that we should have it poke behind when he looks up. So we'll just keep it there. Move up, and then for here, move it up about, about there. So then we have like that back part of his hair. And as I was doing that, I realized that I think the head moves over too far. So we want to move it back a little bit. Um, which is kind of a pain in the ass at this point. So actually no. What it is is this sideburn here. We can fix that so where it's not overlapping here. And same thing with this one, because we don't want it to overlap that. Looks good. Maybe not actually. I might want to have this kind of curve in that way. So like I said, it's all kind of trial and error when it comes to this stuff. Good. So I'm happy with all those keyframes now. So I'll select all of them and click this button, which binds it back to our joystick. Go up and I'll give it a test here. Move up 10 keyframes. Move to the left. Move up 20 keyframes, move them to the right. I already see a little bit of issues going on with that side hair now. So let's take a look at how it looks. Add some easing here, just using flow. Let's take a look at how it looks. Not bad. I'm actually pretty happy with that top hair part, even though that was the hardest part. The side of his head over here is doing some weird stuff. So I'm going to fix that. It's just, I see a little bit of white space poking through. I think we can finesse the top hair a little bit. You'll see if you focus on the center part, when he looks this way, this needs to, the center needs to move to the left a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix this up a little bit. I'm gonna speed through this. That way, get it done quickly.
And I think that looks alright. Hopefully, let's give it a try. Bind our keyframes again to our joystick. I still have these keyframes here from when I animated it. It's not perfect, but I think it's good enough to move on to the next part of this tutorial. So, we're going to go ahead and fix those ears and make them actually move behind the head when he turns his head to the left and the right. So what I'm going to do is go to my ear layers and rename them ear R F and that's for front facing. Ear R L F uh, not front facing, it's for front so it's in front of the head. So now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate them and bring them to where they need to be when they're behind his head. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep them right behind the head layer here. And rename it ear R B for back. Ear R L B I mean ear L B for back. And I'm going to bring up the position and rotation keyframes that we set earlier. And you'll notice there's expressions on there that are linking to the joysticks. I'm going to remove them by holding Alt and just clicking on the keyframe. So that got rid of that, and now I'm going to parent ear R B to ear R F. Parent ear L B to ear L F. I'm going to copy ear R F and ear R B. Just hit copy on my keyboard, Command C, and then we come up here and create a new switch template. And I'll name this one Ear R S T for switch template. Hit OK. Generates this composition over here, which I will throw into my comps folder to keep it organized. And I'm going to paste. So I hit paste, and it pasted my ear layers over here. Next, I'm going to unparent that back layer. So what we do here is it takes a lot of, it takes a lot of messing around with here. So what I just did was I moved that front ear over to the left of this back ear. And I'm kind of just eyeballing it here and positioning it into the center of this comp. I go back to this this character composition here and I'm going to make sure that it says ear, ear RST for my ear switch template that we were just in and then click my head rig joystick layer over here and click bind. So now you'll see the ear is behind the head and when he turns his head to the right or to his left it goes in front and then when he turns his head to the left, it's behind. You don't see it anymore. It's not perfect. It kind of it's kind of jumpy. But I think it's good enough for this tutorial. And I'm actually going to take those front ears and I actually am going to move it up above the top hair. I think it looks better. Yeah, looks much better. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the left ear. I'm going to select ear LF and ear LB. Copy them. Command C on your keyboard. And create a new switch template. Ear L switch template. Hit OK. Throw that composition into my folder. Keep it organized and then paste them, unparent the back one, move this one to the left, kind of just mimic 
try to perfectly mimic that other comp that we just made. We'll go ahead and try that. So we'll go back to the main comp here. Select the left ear switch template and bind it to the head. And we'll go ahead and hit play, see how it goes. And it looks like what I did, I did the wrong thing here. So this layer needs to go on that side, this layer, and there we go. And I think I do that almost every single time. <laughs> so there we go, we have a joysticks and sliders head rig with some switch templates. And I'm going to play around a little bit with this the distance here. I'm not really quite sure how it works. Um, I know Jake in Motion has gone over this before. I think it's toggling the opacity between the front ear and the and the back ear, depending on what that distance between these two layers is. It's some crazy stuff going on. It looks like it's switching too late for that right ear in a little bit. I don't think it necessarily needs to be centered in the comp. I think it's really just the distance between these ears that matters. I think that looks okay. Maybe a little bit closer. Give that a try. Yeah, that looks good. So, next, I want to be able to make sure my character can blink. So, we're going to go to our eye layers. I'm going to save because I haven't saved once yet. I'm going to bring the path property down. I'm actually going to remove these keyframes that I made with the head rig. Um, so for I, number one, we're going to set a keyframe for the path. Move up. A lot of people use uh, a slider for this, um, but I like to use joysticks just to, you know, just that's just what I'm comfortable with. I'm going to copy and paste that keyframe. Move up, paste it, move up paste it, and move up. And the only keyframe that's going to be different here is this last one. I'm bring these down. I'm really going to zoom in here, and that way we can see this eye. So I'm going to make it look like it's blinking here. We don't want it to completely shut like that, because that, that might just look weird. We kind of want it to have this, like, you know, stroke effect. And that's all we need to do for that. I'm going to copy these, paste them for the eye, two. So now we have these keyframes here. I'm going to select them. I'm going to create a new joystick and just call this Blink. Hit OK. Now I'm going to zoom out. Make this massive joystick here. I'm going to scale this down to 50% also. And move it over underneath of my other one here. And then I'm going to select both of them and then just center it. So now let's animate him. Let's animate him turning his head to the right. And to the left. And back to the start. 
add some easing on that. And now we're going to animate that blank. So this is how I animate blanks. I move up three keyframes, bring that joystick down. So it's not perfect, but it's going to work. Move up another three keyframes, copy and paste that same closed eye keyframe. Move up another three keyframes and copy that open keyframe. So that's his blank right there. I'm just going to add some basic F9 easing to that. So when a character turns its head from left to right, up and down, or whatever, the human, actual humans actually blink when they turn their head most of the time. So you're going to want to have him blink when he turns his head. And then again, when he's turning his head here. Let's see how that looks. I'm still not liking that switch template for for this ear, for this right ear. I don't know if we need to move them closer, or if we need to move them farther apart. You kind of just have to mess with it. So, let me move this over here. See how that looks. No. If anyone wants to comment in the comment section how to explain how this works, that would be great. I just mess around with it until it looks good. It looks good enough. So I actually see a problem when he turns his head over here. I don't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and unbind my head rig. And it's going to do all this weird stuff here and get it back to the start. So I'm going to open all those keyframes back up. I'm going to look at that sideburn layer over here and just fix that so we'll never really see anything poking out of his ear. And that should be good. Bind that to the joystick. And that is how you rig a head in After Effects using joysticks and sliders. Thanks for listening to my monotone voice. For a whole hour. Um, I hope this has helped you guys. Comment in the comment sections um, if you have any questions and I'll get back to you.